Hello there, today I'll be creating this proximity effector using Blender's geometry nodes. I am using Blender 4.2 but I guess you can do with older versions too. First select your default cube and add a geometry nodes modifier and create a new node tree. Then go to the geometry nodes editor, zoom in and break the connection, pressing Ctrl right mouse button. Press Shift A and type grid and connect it to the group output. We can enable wireframe in the viewport overlay for better visibility. Now we can see the subdivision. Increase the number of vertices of the grid because we are going to instance an object on each vertex of the plane. So let's add a cube and connect to the group output. Our plane is gone and we see only the cube and we need to add a node to instance it on the grid. Press Shift A again and add an instance on points node. Connect the grid to the point socket and the cube to the instance. Now our cube is too large and we need to change its size. Click and drag to change all axes at once. With the mouse on the viewport, press Shift A Type empty and choose the sphere type. Double click it in the outliner and rename it to a factor. I am resizing it. Select the grid of cubes and on the geometry nodes editor, click on the pin to fix it to the screen so it does not go away when you click outside. Click and drag the factor from the outliner to the geometry nodes editor. So he automatically creates a object info node of the empty. We are going to use it to move the cubes according to the distance from the effector. To move the cubes, let's add a set position node. Place it between the grid and the instance on points node. Try changing the values and as you can see, we are moving the cubes, but we are moving all of them at once. And we need to move only the ones that are closer to the effector. To do that, we are going to use a little bit of math. Click and drag on the object info location socket and drop it. Type math vector math. Change the mode from add to distance. Now add a position node and connect to the second socket of the distance math. I want to move the cubes only in one axis. And in order to do that, we have to add a combine x, y and z node. Connect the distance value to the z socket and the vector to offset and shazan we have our effector working. We just need to map range it and tweak to our liking. Add a map range node and place it between the distance and the set position node. But be careful, it actually needs to be between the distance and the combining x, y and z node. Because if we place it between the to combine X, Y, and Z node and the set position, it will affect all of the axes, and we only want to affect the Z axis. So the order is important here. Now you can tweak the values to make it affect in more or less the position of the cubes. Again, we can use some simple math to make the size of the factor adjust the distance the cubes are affected. To do that, let's add a simple math node and change its mode to divide. To divide the distance by the scale of the effector. You can tweak until you find the settings that you like. One thing we can do to make this setup better is to add a math node between the scale and the divide node set to absolute so what this node does is convert any negative values to positive values that way 
if we scale the empty below zero, the effect doesn't break. On the object info node, we can also change the mode from original to relative, so we can also move the setup and it will still work. For the next step, we will create a shader that is also affected by the distance. Let's change the viewport to the material preview. Select the object that has the geometry nodes modifier. Select the material properties. And as you can see, we already have the material created originally with the default cube. With the mouse on the geometry nodes editor, press Shift A and add a set material node. Now choose the material we have to apply it to the setup. As you can see, we can change the color, but we want a different color for the cubes that are close to the empty. To do that, we need to capture a color attribute to use in our shader. So go to the map range node, click and drag on the result socket, release it, type color ramp, click it. Grab the color and plug to the group output. Now with your object selected, go to the Modifiers tab and you will see in the Outputs tab the color. Now you can give it a name to be later recognized by the shader. To see if it is working, let's look at the spreadsheet. To do that, click and drag on the top corner of the viewport panel and change the mode to spreadsheet. Make sure you have your geometry nodes object selected. Here we should be seeing all the attributes of the object, but as you can see, we only see the 81 instances. To correct that, add a realize instances after the instance on points node. Now we have all the information of the vertices and our color attribute. To have more room, with your mouse on the Geometry Nodes editor, press N so we hide the Geometry Nodes properties on the right side. Create another panel, change its mode to the Shader Editor, Shift A, type Attribute and add a Input Attribute node. Type the name we gave to the Color Attribute and connect the Color Socket to the Base Color. As you can see, it is working, we only need to change the colors. On the shader editor, press Shift A and type Max Color. Place it here and plug the color attribute to the factor. Change color A and B to your favorite colors. On the Geometry Nodes editor, we can also connect the color ramp directly to the effector's distance before the map range so we can use another map range to control only the color on the shader click and drag with shift and right mouse button to create this break point in the line and get more organized here you can add another map range node to have more control you can tweak all the settings until you are satisfied with the result. I am just changing the values on the map range to get the look that I want. For this next part, we are gonna need more room, so click between the panels with your right mouse button and choose Join Areas. Do that until you are left with the viewport and the Geometry Nodes Editor. Now we are going to do a little trick to turn our cube into a sphere. Shift A, set position, and place the node between the cube and instance on points. With the set position, we will normalize the position of every vertex of the geometry. That way we will get a round geometry from the cube. Add a position node and connect it to the position socket of the set position and add a vector map. Change the mode to normalize. Increase the vertices of the cube. 
click and drag to change all of them at once and we will change the size of the sphere or cube sphere select the vector map node press shift d to duplicate and change the mode to scale then decrease the value as you can see if we mute the set position node pressing m we can switch between the sphere and the cube and they will also have the same amount of vertices it is very important for the morphing effect now i'm making a setup to affect only the top part of the cube with the set position node so place a separate x y and z node plug the z axis to a simple math node set to add and plug it to the selection of the set position change the value on the math node to see the effect reduce the vertices count to five on the cube because we are going to subdivide it ahead add a subdivision surface and we already see our geometry looking better let's move around some nodes to make room for the next part we will need two setups for the morphing effect to work one with the cube and the other one with the rounded top select the instance on points node and duplicate it shift d Connect the cube node directly to the top one. And now connect the full setup to the bottom node. Shift D to duplicate realize instances. Let's try connecting the bottom setup to the subdivision. And we see a problem. Here the set position needs to go into instance. And the points has to come from the grid. As you can see we have two setups. One with the cube and the other one with the rounded top. To morph between them, let's add a set position node. Now we need to sample the position of each vertex of the bottom setup and use it to move the vertices of the top setup. So add a sample index node, change from float to vector. Add another position node, connect to the value, move up, add an index node and connect to the index socket. Now look at what happens when we connect the value socket from the sample index node to the position of the set position node in the upper setup. It instantly changes shape. Now we just need to add a mix node to control the effect. Add a mix vector node uncheck clamp factor and here on the we plug the simple index node on the b socket and a new position nodes on the a socket now if we change the factor of the mix vector node we can transition from one shape to another now we just have to get the distance effect that we created and plug into the factor of the mix vector node but actually we can get the value before the map range so we can create another to have more control so add the map range and connect the sockets we now have the basic setup and it is just a matter of tweaking the values to get the desired result. You have to experiment with the map range values, as you can see here. One thing that you need to take into account and be careful is the level of subdivision. When you are previewing and making your animation, you can keep it to zero, so it will play faster. And when you are going to render just turn back to one after the subdivision surface we can add a set shade smooth node and one thing we can do with we don't want to keep enabling and disabling the subdivision surface node is to make a setup so it has one 
level when we are previewing in the viewport and another one automatically when we render. So press Shift A, type is viewport, Shift A again, switch to add a switch node, change the type to integer and plug the viewport to the switch socket. So here the thing is, every time we are on the viewport, it's gonna get the true value. And when we are rendering, it will get the false value. So we can keep two for rendering and zero for the viewport. Now I'm going to enable the wireframe and make a quick render for you to see it. This was supposed to be just a geometry nodes tutorial, so I'm not gonna cover all the lighting, animation, shading and rendering to finish this, but you get the idea. Here's the node setup that we did so far. There are a couple things missing to get the final result that I showed at the beginning because I did not want to make a long video. But the main setup is here. And let me know if you like the, the video, the content, and maybe I can make another one. One one thing only that I did not do here that it is worth mentioning is that if you want the UV coordinates of the cube to use it in your shader, you can capture it in the geometry nodes very easily with this node setup and then use it in the shader editor. That's it. I doubt that someone made to the ending, but I am going to thank you anyway for your like and comment. See you on the next one. Bye.